Have you ever felt like a juggler trying to keep your word processor going while using your communication software and at the same time wanting to pull some figures out of your spreadsheet? Well, we're all jugglers in a way because doing our work usually means doing several tasks at the same time. There is a way to juggle all these computer jobs simultaneously. It's called multitasking. And today we take a look at multitasking software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, this is MultiFinder on the Macintosh here. That, of course, is Apple's new multitasking environment for the Mac. And as you can see, we have three applications going here. I've got Ready, Set, Go in the main window. I can click on my mouse, and there's my word processor running, MacWrite. I can click over here, and there's my spreadsheet, Excel. You personally in DRI, I know, have been involved in developing multitasking software. In the past, you've told me what a difficult job this is from a developer's point of view. Why is it so difficult? Well, Stuart, as you're aware, the operating system itself is that software layer in between an application mm -hmm. and the hardware. And a lot of existing software that's written for a single tasking uh, system today, they use little go-arounds. And that mm -hmm. means basically that they call directly into the hardware to do special things, to speed up the software or to simulate multitasking, mm -hmm. like those TSRs, Terminate State Resident right. Programs. Well, the difficulty with trying to make those run in a multitasking environment is you've got to detect those go-arounds, make sure you simulate the environment properly so that they don't destroy one another in the yeah, process. Right, right. <laughs> okay. Now, a lot of the applications today are written for multitasking explicitly, so they don't have to do, use those go-arounds. They use actually the facilities of the OS itself. Gary, today we'll take a look at some of the latest multitasking software. We'll see your product, Concurrent DOS. We'll see Windows 386 from Microsoft. And we'll take a look at OS 2's Extended Edition and the Presentation Manager from IBM. We'll also see AUX, the new operating system for the Mac 2. Now, in the past, if you wanted multi-user, multitasking capability, you may have turned to Unix. We're going to begin by taking a look at one implementation of Unix, the Xenix operating system, on a Tandy 3000 system. Foothill Securities is a small, family-run firm headquartered in Los Altos, California, near San Francisco. The owner and president, Mr. Rex Gardner, shares a cozy two-room office with his son, two other employees, and a 286-based Tandy 3000 running the SCO Xenix multitasking operating system. We wanted uh, our people to be able to access the same files at the same time. Uh, and by using Xenix, we, we have a multi-user, multi-tasking uh, capability. So we have several different databases, uh, one for list of our representatives, another list of products, another list of mutual funds, for example. And when we enter uh, orders, we uh, access all those databases sometimes simultaneously, but we can have different people accessing those same databases at the same time. The gardeners process an impressive amount of information and money from their Spartan office, about $36 million worth of orders just last year. At this company, the real advantage of a multitasking system is that it's multi-user. One machine can provide a list of mutual funds, particulars about a sale, and general accounting simultaneously to anyone with a terminal screen. It takes longer to retrieve information when everyone is online. Still, it's the multitasking system that gives this company its competitive edge. Oh, well, we just put in fewer man hours or woman hours to do the same job. It's that simple. We hire computers instead of people. It's not that we don't hire people, but if we didn't have the computers, we'd have to hire two or three more people.
Joining us in the studio now is Tony Harris of Digital Research Incorporated, and I might mention that Gary, while he is not hosting Computer Chronicles, happens to be chairman of the board of we'll DRI. Say, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, the thing that's kind of interesting now uh, about the whole microcomputer business is the processes are getting very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. We can hang an awful lot of memory on them and so forth. So it's a, we're at a point now, if we have good multitasking, multi-user operating systems, we can start replacing mini computers in a much more effective, uh, cost-effective way. So. That's where we're at. Okay, Tony, the, the product we're going to look at from DRI in just a second is Concurrent DOS. And first of all, I want you to tell me how, how that fits in in the big picture now with OS2 in particular. Right. Well, this is Concurrent DOS 386, actually, Stuart, and it's part of a whole of a family of Concurrent DOS operating systems. Basically, if you look right back to PC DOS, PC DOS is really the single-tasking operating system for the DOS world, runs one DOS application at a time. OS2, on the other hand, is a multitasking operating system which runs multitasking OS2 programs. Okay, and concurrent DOS 386 is really a multitasking operating system for DOS applications. That's really its whole focus. Its focus is to run multiple DOS applications, um, multitasking them on either the same or on, in fact, multiple terminals. It is a multi-user operating system as well. Okay, which is, I take it, what we have set up here. And describe what's here, and then run us through uh, concurrent DOS 386. Absolutely. Well, basically, what we've got uh, underneath the table actually is um, an IBM uh, PS2 model 80, which is, of course, the 386 um, model from uh, IBM. And we've got the main console here, which is connected directly in. And then, in fact, uh, connected off the uh, two serial ports, um, the two uh, RS-232 communication ports of the machine, are two standard serial terminals. Well, it's rather interesting if you actually look, because, in fact, all three of them are running Lotus 123, which, of course, we know is the industry standard spreadsheet mm -hmm. program. And you might rather expect it to just really be running on here. Um, what's even more interesting is that all is not quite as it appears because, in fact, if you uh, press a little key here, you actually see that there are lots and lots of processes actually running, lots of tasks running here. And, in fact, on these serial terminals even themselves, I can hit a key on this one, for example, and find that uh, I'm running DBase 3 at the mm -hmm. same time. So what we're seeing here is the ability of the IBM PS2 Model 80 as a 386-based machine um, in conjunction with concurrent DOS 386, its ability to run both standard DOS applications, because the operating system is completely DOS compatible, but to be able to run multiple DOS applications and to allow shared access to them. So um, the typical configuration here would be where um, I would say the manager sitting at the desk, mm -hmm. I had access to my spreadsheet, and then my secretarial workstations could be doing word processing or in fact even Tony, some Can you show us something that's going on mm. in the background? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. Um, what I've actually got here, we can see I can in fact go from a windowed look into 123 to a full screen. What I can also do is switch these uh, multiple windows um, <clears throat> up in front of uh, uh, in, into the foreground. And in fact, if I take that one up to full screen, we'll see that we've got a, a system status utility which is showing us all the different tasks and processes that are running in the operating mm -hmm. system. And uh, go back to here, go back to uh, Lotus, pull that to full screen. And on the serial terminals, you know, how would you use this? I guess you might say, what's the use of it? Well, of course, here I've got DBase uh, 3 Plus, which is running on the terminal. Mm -hmm. I hit a key, and what it's starting to doing now is packing my database. It's actually compressing the database. And then what I can do is switch away from there, move to Lotus, and actually start manipulating my spreadsheet, adding some data, and calculating mm -hmm. while that's actually going on in the background. So a very, very powerful system. Okay, Tony, thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll take a look at Windows 386 from Microsoft, so stay with us. <music> Joining us in the studio now is Dave Jaworski of Microsoft. Gary. Hi. Dave. Uh, Microsoft has introduced two operating systems, two multitasking operating systems, OS2 and uh, Windows 386. How do you position those two? Okay, uh, the interface is the same across OS2 Presentation Manager, Windows 386, and Windows 2, and that's important. It, Windows 386, which we're going to look at today, follows IBM's SAA Common User Access Standard. So in the future, all applications are going to have this interface. Windows 386 runs only on the Intel 80386 processor. OS2 is built for the 286 platform and beyond. And it really is the operating system and a platform for the future. The 386 product that we're going to look at today is a short-term product in that it takes advantage only of the 386 right okay. now and well, won't run anywhere else. 
Sure. In the future, all applications are going to have these pull-down menus and a, a common way of interacting with the user. We have a window open here. I can click on this window, a clock that's running at the same time. I'm able to look in the corner here. I have icons that represent different actions. So if I click on that icon, it reduces that down to a small picture of a disk. Here's Microsoft Excel, a spreadsheet program. And this is able to go and get information from a variety of sources. Not only can I work with my standard spreadsheets, but I'm also able to load up an application that can talk to other Windows applications mm -hmm. through something we call Dynamic Data Exchange, DDE. This program, as it starts up, it knows that it's missing some spreadsheet information. And it says, I can reestablish a link to that. Would you like me to do that? So we'll ask it to do that. It also noted that the application server is not running. So it says, would you like me to start that? And I simply say yes. Mm -hmm. This is going to simulate a feed coming in from a stock exchange. It could be pulling in data over a network for, for coming from a variety of sources. And now you'll notice that we have real-time updating of the spreadsheet. I can go beyond that and say, please give me a, a graph of this information. So Excel will now take that information and make some assumptions about its format and will give me a graph. Mm -hmm. Don't pick up the phone and call anybody. <laughs> this is just a simulation. Okay. These are not real stock market results. While that's running, what I'll do is reduce this down to a window. And I'm going to go back now and start up the executive and go in and load up Microsoft Word. This is a standard DOS application. Like many of the products people are working with today on their computers, we want to make sure that they can run those in this new environment. I can run full screen and, and load up files, do all the standard things I would do working in DOS. Or I can choose to pull in information from the Windows product and paste it into my word processor. I'm also able to toggle back and run Word in a window. And then again, as we work here, the clock is still mm -hmm. running. And if I reduce this down again, you'll see that my spreadsheet back here is still giving us that live feed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to work with multiple applications, both existing DOS applications and new applications for the future in this platform. OK, Dave, thank you very much. That's You're impressive. Welcome. As we mentioned earlier, Unix has been one operating system that users have turned to if they were interested in multi-user, multitasking capability. It's never been known for its user friendliness, though. Apple is trying to solve that problem with its new AUX for the Mac 2. Wendy Woods has a report. This is a Unix operating system, which for the first time combines the multitasking of Unix with the friendly interface of the Macintosh. It's Apple's version of Unix, called AUX. Berkeley, California's Abacus Concepts is one of the first software developers to write for this new hybrid operating system. Abacus has adapted its StatView 2 statistical analysis package, designed for the Mac, to run as a Unix program. People here say AUX is exciting because it gives them tools they've never had before. It's not visual yet, but uh, true multitasking is there, true interprocess communication. Um, and also virtual memory, which is important for us also. The idea of being able to access more memory than physically resides in the machine is very important for very large applications. The multitasking capabilities should be much more evident in the next version of StatView 2. Well, we envision that um, typically people are going to be using a StatView on AUX systems when they have large analyses to perform. And uh, we are going to break StatView up in such a way that they can initiate those analyses and have them run in the background while they can go off and access their data, play with things, or do other smaller calculations all in the foreground. Um, it's just, that's just the, the smartest way for us to do it. Abacus and other developers are banking on the belief that AUX will expand the Unix market to people of all walks of life who want the power of Unix and the ease of use of a Mac. In Berkeley, California for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us in the studio now is Lee Ricewig, director of the Austin Lab at IBM. Gary? You know, look at this the whole setup here, Lee, and it looks like a computer room rather than a personal computer. <laughs> we uh, brought, what do you have here? Anyway? We brought, uh, Gary, part of the Austin Lab here <laughs> to the show tonight so we can show you all the things that OS2 does. And we've got two Model 60s, uh, both running OS2, and a monitor on one and monitor on the other. And then we've got some communications control units back to 
Austin that allow us to be live connected with communications from these systems, and I'll show you how some of the communications works in OS2. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get ready. Okay, to this is the main menu that you see when you bring up OS2. It's like the DOS old C prompt, but this is now how it comes up on the left-hand side. You see the programs that you can run, and on the right-hand side, it shows the programs that are actually running. We started mm -hmm. a bunch already. The first one there is the DOS command prompt, and we can go ahead and run that, and that's actually the DOS compatibility window in OS2 that runs PC DOS programs without modification. I'm here running a F-16 flight simulator, mm -hmm. for example, uh, and there's the, there's the main screen of the flight simulator. We can go back to that uh, main menu now and look through the other things that we've got here. We have the communication manager running. We have some advanced program to program communication programs running. 3270 terminal emulation back to a 370 system in Austin. An asynchronous terminal session like to Dow Jones. We're using a system in Austin again. The new relational database manager for OS2 and display write mm -hmm. uh, written for OS2 to run in the new uh, large real memory. So let's cycle through a few of those yep, and sure, look at sure. them. Okay. Uh, first thing we do is uh, pick the one we want, and let's go to the communication manager menu. And we can start and stop communications, and the communication manager of OS2, the unique things about it are that it can do so many different kinds of communications, number one, and it can do them concurrently. And right now, we're running multiple communication sessions between these two Model 60s. We're transferring files from one Model 60 to the other, and we're doing it with two separate file transfers going on in, in parallel, as well as being connected back to the Austin uh, host systems. This is one of the 6.2 sessions. You can see the data cycling through the windows here. Uh, it's coming from this system. Let's go ahead and take a look at that same session, session running on this system. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that both systems are cycling and transferring data. And we're actually doing multiple sessions simultaneously here between the systems. I'll switch to the second. This is the second session. It's also running on this one. And they're running simultaneously across the SDLC line between these two systems. Uh, we'll go to the next one. This is the profs system in Austin where we used it to get our mail and, and mm -hmm. uh, exchange notes across the IBM Corporation. We're not just running one session here, though, with the 370 in Austin. This is the profs session. Here's uh, an asynchronous profs session. If I was dialed in from home and I wanted to be able to get my mail, I could use an inexpensive modem uh, on OS2 and, uh, and talk to my host system. Uh, this is the database manager. Uh, for OS2. It's a new uh, relational database manager that, that provides easy access to data. Let's create a, a query here, for example. This is the main menu. It says, do you want to create a new query or uh, uh, use one that you've previously created? I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do a new one. Mm -hmm. And I want to open the query. And it says, what tables would you like to use for your query? And I'll uh, ask it to give me a list. And it says, you have three inventory Oregon staff. I'm going to pick the staff table. It puts it right in the menu. And I go ahead and hit Enter. And it, what it is is prompting me through the options that I have to create an mm -hmm. SQL query so that I don't have to know SQL. And so, so says, we, we hear that SQL is a part of the extended version now. Is that, right. is that correct? That's right. Okay, so we're, what we're reviewing here is the extended version. We're looking at the extended edition. Okay. It's, uh, it contains an IBM communication manager that I showed mm -hmm. you some of, mm -hmm. and then it also contains this uh, relational database manager integral mm -hmm. to the operating mm -hmm. system. Uh, now it's asking me for what columns of data do I want, and I'm going to pick all of them. And so it lists all the columns on the left-hand side. And now it asks me for what row conditions. If I wanted to select if a name was equal to a certain thing or a quantity was a certain amount. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, run this query and look at all the rows and columns to make it uh, uh, a little simpler and a little faster for us. So I go up here to Actions, and the first action is Run. And I select Run, and it goes against that table in the database and puts out the report in a default format, which I can then customize. Mm -hmm. Now, all of that was going on while these communication sessions, this is the 6.2 session, 32.70 sessions are connected into Austin. Uh, the modems are running with the file transfers between the two systems. Mm -hmm. and that gives you a feel for the power of, of OS2 and the kinds of things it can do. Now you, do you see that uh, the SQL interface then is being something that carries on up to your uh, mainframe? Uh, this, the, uh, all of the extended edition user interface, mm -hmm. as well as the programming interfaces, are what uh, IBM refers to as SAA compliant. Okay. Mm -hmm. OS2 is the system's application architecture implementation for IBM. Be consistent on our 370 systems, on our mid-range systems, and on the PS2s. Mm -hmm.
Okay, can you show us Presentation Manager, Lee? Okay, Stuart, this is a uh, very early version of the Presentation Manager. It ships in October on the Standard Edition, and it's upgraded in the Extended Edition. And it brings IBM System Application Architecture Common User Access Standard to OS2 and PS2s. It is a joint development between us and Microsoft. And as you can see, it, the windows are very analogous, and the presentation is very analogous to what's in the Windows mm -hmm. 386 and Windows 2 product. I'm going to give you a couple examples of the kinds of things that applications can use. I'm going to move through a, a list of files here uh, and uh, execute one that creates some graphs for us. Mm -hmm. And you can see some of the graphing capabilities that, that we'll begin to see. I'll broaden the, the window here. And uh, it has the same kind of pull-down menus that, that we're accustomed to. Uh, let's pick some, uh, say, a bar graph here, for mm -hmm. example. Here's a bar graph. Uh, we can look at line graphs. Uh, and we can look at uh, Gantt charts. Even. Mm -hmm. okay. So it gives us the ability for applications now to deal with graphical information on the screen and, and users to deal with graphical information on the screen as well. Now, let's go back and uh, look at, because we're on a, uh, um, a um, multitasking operating system running multiple applications. The advantage of a, of a windowed system is that we can uh, uh, actually see things going on simultaneously in these mm -hmm. windows. And uh, let's pick an example of an application we have here that gives us uh, some movement on the screen in the application. And we can uh, start a couple of these up and you actually see mm -hmm. the applications running simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So here's just a, a just scrolls the characters. Now these these applications can be scrolled and windowed uh, mm -hmm. just like uh, any other mm -hmm. application. And in fact, we can start up more than one. And I'll start another one here. And you can actually watch what's going on in both windows uh, simultaneously, which is nice if you're looking for, say, a message or, or a uh, uh, particular, oops, got the wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually so this could be a background these. communication program, for example? Right, yeah. exactly. OK, that's Presentation Manager. That's Presentation Manager. Right. Lee, uh, now, with the move from the standard version of OS2 to a, looks like a proprietary version, is that what IBM is doing now, is moving toward pri or proprietary of their own software? No. I th you know, it was very important, as we thought, to have the OS2 capabilities across all the systems in the industry. And that's why we worked with Microsoft to provide the standard edition of OS2. But we also wanted to provide IBM enhancements to it to make it communicate better with our own systems and to put a systems application architecture standard across our hardware and make that work better in any in the industry. And that's why we did Extended Edition. We didn't, Extended Edition does not preclude anyone from running their own communications or database management mm -hmm. system on the Extended Edition or on the Standard Edition. Lee, thanks very much for being here. Okay, We're out sorry. of time. That's our look at multitasking, OS2, and the Presentation Manager. Hope we'll see you here next week on Computer Chronicles. Access file this week. The Summer Macworld Expo was held in Boston last week. Among the product introductions for the Macintosh were a new 2 megabyte Mac SE with a 40 megabyte hard drive. Apple also showed a new scanner, and there was talk of soon to be released 68030 Macintosh. No Mac laptop yet, but General Computer Corporation is ready. They showed off a portable printer for the Mac measuring only 2 inches by 6.5 inches. Total Systems Integration unveiled an accelerator board that makes an ordinary Mac run like a 68020 machine, operating at 16 to 20 megahertz. On the software side, MacroMind introduced a new, more powerful version of VideoWorks, including a CD-ROM disk with a library of images and sounds. Oracle showed off its new Mac database using both SQL and HyperCard. And MediaGenic, formerly Activision, unveiled several new hyperstacks. We'll have a special show on the Boston Macworld Expo coming up next month. The big show before the Macworld Expo was SIGGRAPH in Atlanta, the premier computer graphics show. Highlights were new powerful graphic workstations and friendlier user interfaces and lots of talk about the problem of standards. Texas Instruments says it has developed the prototype for a three-dimensional computer graphics system. The TI machine uses laser pulsers bouncing off a rotating disk to create real time, changing 3D images which float in space and can be viewed from the front, the back, or the sides. Casio says it has a new color liquid crystal display screen with 200,000 pixels on a six-inch screen. The developers say the resolution is as good as on a cathode ray tube. 
Time for this week's software review. Here's Paul Schindler. If you travel like I do, you find it difficult to stuff everything you want into your suitcase. Well, the same thing can be true of desktop accessories with your Macintosh. Under Mac rules, you can only have a little more than a dozen desktop accessories at one time, which is why you need Suitcase. You can have virtually as many desktop accessories, or DAs, as you want under Suitcase. You don't need to have them all in your system folder, either. They can be anywhere on your disk. When you kick up Suitcase, it installs itself as the first desk accessory under the Apple symbol. You take a desk accessory from another folder and put it in the suitcase, just like packing. You didn't move it, you just gained access to it. Plus, when you buy suitcase, you get Pyro, a screen protector. You can adjust Pyro from the control panel, you can set up a corner to turn the screen off, and you can adjust the automatic turnoff time from one minute to two hours. Suitcase for the Macintosh, $60 from Software Supply in Sunnyvale, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. Software sales in the United States were booming during the second quarter of 1988. The Software Publishers Association says software sales were up 50% over last year. Sales of IBM-compatible titles totaled over $700 million. But the fastest-growing segment of the software business was Macintosh Software, which reached sales of over $100 million. Western Digital Corporation has announced a new hard disk drive for the Apple IIe and 2GS. It's available in 20 or 40 megabyte capacities. It features automatic park and a small footprint. Also, iOmega Corporation says it is coming out with a new Bernoulli box for the Macintosh. The Mac Bernoulli includes software that will let a Mac read files from a Bernoulli cartridge that was created on an IBM PC. Finally, the Computer Museum in Boston is hosting a Macintosh computer art show. From now into the middle of October, the show will feature black and white and color stills, plus several animated works and slideshows. That's it for this week's Random Access File. I'm Cynthia Steele. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $3 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.